Alright. Oh, hey, how you doing? I'm Nicholas Kirby. I'm the second shift. Um, maintenance electrical tech. Now, I'm going to be creating a video teaching you how to use the YouTube box printer. I teach a lot of people how to um, use these, so I thought I'd make a video. Oh, we only have to do it one time. And then you can always go back and rewatch it. Today is the 24th of November, 2022, and it's 2.13 a.m. And we're going to start off with a remote control. Uh, I will try to get the remote control in view while I'm using it. And if not, um, we will go over it. It's pretty straightforward. Your top buttons are more of your, your program. If you're writing a program using it, uh, most of the programs are written on the computer. And I see no reason why you had to write a program. Um, pretty much use the same program since I've been here. I have rewritten it one time just to make it where it automatically switches over at midnight so we no longer have to go to rework at midnight and manually change it. To print off your print on and you also have your function tools escape. Enter to say go whatever to like your remote control with your TV and if you have to do rework for some reason you have an ABC button which changes from your numbers to your letters which corresponds with your numbers. It's like an old telephone. Your space and enter delete backspace and the symbols. If you need to move a gap, space it out. You have left and right with a fast and then you see double arrows which make it move a little bit faster. Um, you flip it over, you have a battery tray. And if you see my remote control, you'll notice it will not work right off the get-go because I keep my battery upside down. So the whole tray is upside down inside of my remote control. So it should sit like that. So if it is not in use, Take the whole tray, take the whole tray upside down and put it back in. Just like so. So what that'll do is while it is in your bag, in your pocket, and your buttons are getting smashed, pressed, whatever, and it is not draining your battery. There's no indication light showing, hey, I have a button pressed. So next time you go to grab it to use it, guess what? Your battery will be dead. Battery is a Duracell 2032. Can buy a replacement at Walmart. Sometimes they may have them in here. You can come ask Jesse or Dave or somebody for one. Sometimes they may have them. It's always better just to have your own and be ready to go. And just make sure you always have a spare. So as soon as you get a new printer, um, you're gonna plug it in. It's 110. It's a 12 volt inverter, um, transformer. Ink cartridge. Step up the top, fold down the back, put it in, fold at the back, and snap it down. Your alarm button's gonna go away. And then you have this little button here on the top. And that's gonna power on your IR. So it's going to say, hey, my remote control can pick up, or no, it cannot. So now my remote control should work. So I'll go into under my editor. As you see right now, I only have one password, or one line of code, which is my serial number. I have a handy dandy thumb drive, which will be inserted into the top of the printer. <clears throat> and that is going to ask me 
import and overwrite from USB onto write settings and messages. So I'll click enter and USB sync. Do I want to upgrade? Sure, why not? I'll get out of here in just a second. Okay. So after we select OK, it's gonna up. Usually, you probably won't need an update, especially if it's on the line already. But what's gonna do is it's gonna update, it's gonna reboot, and then after it reboots, you're gonna come to this. So we can go ahead and take this flash drive out, and we're done with it. So if you're getting some kind of something crazy going on, you know, if if you come in from on the second shift, from day shift, um, you, you don't know what's going on with it, day shift has done been messing with it, they done got all kinds of weird crap going on with it, the simplest thing to do is throw a flash drive in it, so like what I'm going to do here, I'm going to modify this real quick, so So here we go. So I come in, day shift done got some crazy crap going. Alright, and I'm like, man, what what have they done? You know, they didn't got the text all shrunk up and you know, you're just like, what the hell? And they print in the right spot, they're raising all kinds of hell and you're just man, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. You know, or maybe you're even on day shift, and you come in in the morning, you plug it in, and you're, man, what what a second shift done done to this thing? You know, your date code ain't working right, your Julian date ain't right, and you're just, who who knows? Okay, so take your thumb drive once again. I'm gonna open this little pretty little thing up. Let's make sure that we're not printing, and we're on this little standby screen. Yeah, only thing blinking is our run. Throw our little thumb drive in there. And we're going to wait a second. And there it is. Import and overwrite from USB. And at this point, honestly, we only have to do messages. But look. Uh huh? It don't work. We have to unplug, replug. Just like your computer at home, if you make some kind of change to it, it's not going to automatically update. When you update your computer, what does it tell you? I need to reboot. So, it needs to reboot. So now that we have restart, once again, we're back to normal. Now what will sometimes happen is when we go to pull this thumb drive out, what are we going to do? Get so close to this uh, IR on and IR off button, we're going to pull our flash drive out. I'm going to go ahead and hit none. We're going to go ahead and pull our flash drive out. And we're gonna turn that off. And guess what? Oh, oh no, it don't work! Because I have to turn it back on. Let your... Don't be in a rush. One button click, wait for it to move. One button click, wait for it to move. <clears throat> and after you upload your new program, or reset the program, the changes that you must make Depending on what side of the box you're printing on, you may have to go and change your delay. What your delay does is create a, an inch gap. As it states, delay value below, between 0 to 98 inch. So from what I've seen, they're between 1 inch and 22 to 25. 
depending on what side of the box it is printing on. But for this instance, you know, I'm going to put it at 2 inches. Because we're going to play around with it a little bit. Your next stop will need to be your function menu. And you can press the function key on your menu on your remote. And it's going to take you to your menu. All of this here is going to be transferred from your settings. Under your general, look at your clock. 158. You need to set your clock correctly with a clock on the wall. So let's scroll down under our general settings. Um, I don't want to worry about daylight savings time. It just shows auto on. Or on all the time. Let's go ahead and go into our system time. Here's our year, our month, our day, our hour. So let's scroll on over to our hour. Zero two. Twenty-eight. And for our seconds, you know, we want it somewhere average. I usually always put it at 30. We usually want the printers changing around the same time. You don't want one day saying something completely you know, other than the other one. Completely different than the other one. So, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Confirm. Yes. And as far as our general settings, we're good. Now we're at 228, 39, 40, 41. And we're happy with it. As far as our next one, go over to the right under our printhead settings. I'm going to print a standard. The direction, depending on which side our printer is on. I'm going to print box going to the left or box going to the right. And you'll have to set that up depending on which way your box is coming. Everything else stays the same. Go to the right again. Under your devices, your next big one is your encoder. So with your encoder, if you turn it on, there's no encoder to the printer. So it's not going to tell it, hey, this is when you print. <clears throat> so let me show you what this setting does. So right now it is at 4721. And this is where a lot of people get confused. So right now, this is your last setting. So right now we're just going to go in and we're going to print on line 3 Pro Production. And we're going to hit print, print on, and we're ready to print. We have a print indicator and we have a run sign. So as of right now, our printer is ready to print. Now, we print. But look at how ridiculously big we are. So how do we fix that? You know, we're going to the print to the font size. We're just going to change the font. No, that's going to take five ten minutes to go to each line to change the size of the font. We hit our function key. It's going to take us back to our menu. We go over to our devices. Hit enter. Our encoder. Hit enter. We're going to make our encoder 3 to 250 feet per minute. Now, if we go up to 250, it's going to be really small. So we're going to go 200. And we're going to back out. And we're going to say print on. And we're going to wait, and there it goes. And then, as you see on my paper towel, it is printing backwards, but... And now look at me. But as our box goes, we're going to be printing smaller and smaller as we need to actually print. <clears throat> so that's a big difference from that. 
So if we're printing this, the entire length of the box, I don't need to print the entire length of the box. I need to print small and short. And the way I do that is by changing my encoder. Which once again, I can do escape or I can do print off. So if I do escape once, I'm going to freeze. I'm going to do escape again and my print goes off. I can do escape again it's going to back out and function. It's going to take me to my settings. Devices. Encoder. And then change my setting. I usually have it on 200 on everything. That's If you want it smaller, go up. If you need it larger, go down. And everything else pretty much stays the same. Uh, and that's it, right there. Alright, for this section, it's going to be kind of a troubleshooting. Um, if your printer is just constantly spraying on the box, which we've had a couple of times, um, little sensor right here take you take your shirt take you paper towel take you whatever you can take and get in there and clean those off they might have ink on it they may have this uh, the piece of metal actually may be in front of it um, stop it clean it off check it and it should be okay. <clears throat> if for some reason you're getting lines going through your print, which we see quite a bit, um, take it, clean it. If it doesn't do no good, guess what? Go into your function key. Go into your print head. And look at nozzle, left, right. Your printhead has two nozzles. So it has one on the right and one on the left. So if your left one gets clogged, you can switch and use your right one. And same thing, if it's on your right, you can switch it and use your left one. Pretty nifty, huh? And then in your print mode, you actually have an HD print mode, which uses both nozzles, but it uses a lot of ink, so we don't use it. If you switch nozzles, and it is still giving you lines through your print, what did you do? <coughs> well, we're going to open the bad boy up. We're going to take a cloth. And we're going to wipe off the contacts. Because what done happened? We made and then got a little overspray of ink and came back to it. And then got ink on it. So it's not connecting very well. Even the inside of our printer. As an electronics tech, scale tech, you should carry a toothbrush. Very few people do. And but what you're going to do with this toothbrush is you're going to take this toothbrush and you're going to run it across the contacts in your printer and you're going to get that dust, ink, whatever may be on there, you're going to get that dust and some junk off the contacts of your printer. And then you're going to put it back in. You're going to close it back up. And guess what? Most of the time, it's going to work and you're not going to have to spend another $1,200 for another printer and there's nothing wrong with this one. Let's say that you have a USB. Now that you have a USB, what do you do with it? Well, hey, I have a blank one. <coughs> I have a blank USB. What do you do with it? And they go crying and Nicholas, Nick, Nick, no USB, no USB.
Yeah, I've tried that before, but it got to the point where nobody could keep up with it. <coughs> so what you do now is you get your USB, you buy your USB, you acquire it, however, whatever, blank. Put your blank USB in the printer. Not a valid YouTube Pro printer. USB, do you want to format it? Yes, I want to format it. And it's going to format your USB. I go into function, general, and lucky there. There's a tab that says USB sync. I'm going to say OK. Message export completed. So what does that mean? I'm going to do it again just for good measures. So once again, message export finished, not completed. So, so now I have officially synced the printer to my brand new USB. <coughs> so now I have everything I need in case this printer takes a crap next time. I don't have to worry about Nick. I don't have to worry about Casey Godwin, AJ Irwin. Barnaby Dominguez, whoever. And I have everything I need. So, important override. You see? And now I've done everything myself and I don't need nobody else. I'm ready to go. Brand new printer, brand new USB, and I'm ready. Alright, some a little bit more advanced things that end up happening is whatever reason there is actually a bug inside the printer so every few months something will come around where my product offset date is correct um so if i go into edit tab i edit my code i edit so for my chicken nuggets my offset is 150 days off And then on my line four, my, my line four product is 270 days off. So what will end up happening is even though I am 270 days off offset from today, I'm reading 20 August um, 2022, of course, it'll end up giving me a 21st, or if I do... Um, 269 it'll read the 19th of August so if you do the, the, the two, 270 it'll give you tomorrow if you do 269 it'll give you yesterday it will never give you today at a 270 day offset so it's a bug in the printer so what you end up having to do is going into edit on the date code on the expiration and it's weird because it will give you that will be correct the Julian day for the 327th day of the year and the 2 for the 2022 for today's date all this will be correct but that offset day is the only thing that's, that's not correct so it's not calculating that offset day correct it's a bug in the printer so you'll go into that edit and the only thing you can do is format select. And this is going deeper into the program. 
Um, so as you see, the, the, the day, month, year is actually part of the program, so it will change day to day. But what you end up having to do is edit that again. And you'll end up having to delete the actual code and actually typing that actual code in. So I'll actually have to do 20 space, hit my ABC key, you're going to see my ABC pop up, and then type 2, 8, 8, 4, and it's going to spell out August, space, and then that ABC key again, and it's going to drop it down the lowercase, and then it's going to disappear for numbers, and then 2022. And now it's going to go over all the way down to OK. And now it's going to make that a permanently set day. So it's no longer going to be a program day, month, year. It's going to be a text day, month, year. <coughs> and then the next day, they're going to have to come in and reflash it, reset it. And if you're the one next day, reflashing, resetting, um, so on and so forth, honestly, all you have to do, come back in under this edit, go in to that date code, go to your format, and there it is, typed in. We're going to edit, we're going to delete it, and then backspace, Everybody's going to type it out down at the bottom. So we're going to do date. We're going to do a space. The month. And the year. Then we can come back up here and we can space it out. And then we can OK it. And now we've done put it back where it needs to be. And everybody's happy. Just save a lot of headache. Whatever. Make it quicker, make it more user friendly. Um whatever I need to do to make it easy for everyone. Um, inside of your editor settings is pretty much where the main code sets. Uh, the use through the hope, two, three, four strings. Uh, you know, your string is your table that never changes. Uh, your shift is pretty much at midnight using your shift table to change your hour. So it's not actually using a time to change your hour. It's using a shift code to change your hour. It's going at midnight. It shifts over to zero, zero. And at three o'clock, it's going to switch to three o'clock. So if we're working past three, at three o'clock, it's going to switch to three o'clock. There's no more midnight. Um... Uh, Time date counter custom year um, it's gonna go over at three twenty four hour format. If I have questions about this thing, please ask me. Please get get one. Play with it, go through it, learn it. It's very simple. Don't let it kick your butt. Uh, you read your work, see so you have your little tabs at the top, moving left and right. Edit tab, edit rework. So move over, edit. So I'm going to edit my 26th of July, and once again I'm going to edit um, my content. 26th of July 21, I'm linking in my box, and I'm just going to backspace. Now if I do eights, oops, gotta hit that ABC button. And now I can do 
Jim. And ABC again. He's going to give me small. ABC again. Now it's going space and a year. 2022. Let's go all the way to the bottom. Hit next. And this is going to allow me to move it, but it's already in position, so I shouldn't have to move it. Hit enter again, and it's saved. Hit edit, and it's going to allow me to move over, change my Julian day. And then line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5, whatever, and then my hour. And they're in the exact same format, content, escape. All the way over, content, 13. If you make a change, you got to go down and hit that next. Going to see if you want to move it shouldn't need to and once you get back here hit that escape key go back to the right print the only thing you may have to do to do a rework is go over to that delay so once that encoder is set in the settings the encoder doesn't change the uh, the delay will change so the delay on this line is zero, so you will have to go down and change that delay, whatever is on that box. <coughs> Thanks for watching.